folks. Today I'd like to take a casual peek into the Magic the Gathering Theros Fat Pack by Wizards of the Coast. This set represents the first in the Theros block of Magic the Gathering and uh, was first available towards the end of uh, September of 2013 and sold at most mass retailers for about $40. I got this set uh, in May of 2014 uh, getting back into the uh, Magic the Gathering uh, card uh, collecting and uh, gaming hobby. And uh, I found this uh, Theros Fat Pack uh, at a uh, comic shop called Broadway Comics and Cards. And paid $39.99 for this set. Taking a closer peek at the Theros Fat Pack here. You can see that uh, the theme, color theme here is green. And uh, you also see the featured uh, uh, Planeswalker, uh, I believe her name is Elspeth. Uh, pretty cool. And this is a nice uh, fat pack, uh, pretty much the standard uh, of, of fat packs uh, nowadays. Uh, and uh, it's pretty cool and contains uh, quite a bit. You can see the deck box here uh, with the Theros logo there. And... Uh, Taking a look at the back of the package here, you can see uh, some of the information about uh, Theros, uh, which is a, a thematically a, uh, I guess, a nod toward uh, Greek mythology in this particular block, so which is uh, pretty cool. And uh, you have uh, some nice, uh, a, a new type, a god type, uh, which is pretty interesting, and some new me uh, mechanics as well. And uh, you can see here some, um, I guess, advertising of the different uh, types of sets you can uh, purchase. Uh, you have intro packs, uh, pretty much uh, semi-randomized uh, decks uh, with a couple of boosters. And over here on the right, they're advertising the booster packs themselves. Of course, the typical 15-card uh, pack there. And uh, in the center here, we have uh, what's... Uh, advertised uh, in this particular product here the fat pack and uh, it kind of, uh, contains uh, quite a few items here which is uh, pretty cool uh, like uh, nine booster packs spin down life counter a couple of deck boxes uh, of course you have the big box uh, here to store cards in as well as the encyclopedia of all of the cards in this particular uh, Theros set of the Theros uh, block, which is uh, pretty interesting. Now uh, we'll be right back and uh, have the contents of this set out of the uh, box. Okay, we're back and we have the contents of the Theros fat pack here out of the packaging. And before we uh, take a peek at all of the neat goodies here, I just wanted to share uh, at least uh, my uh, history of involvement with Magic the Gathering since I've been away from the uh, hobby for a while. Uh, I have been uh, collecting and playing Magic the Gathering uh, ever since the revised edition, uh, which I think goes back to the early to mid 90s, I think 1995. And I've been. Uh, Never a really uh, good player. Uh, I've been more of a collector than a player. Uh, when I did play, I really uh, just played for fun. I really liked building uh, theme decks and uh, of any uh, particular set that I was involved with at the time. And uh, but I really loved like the card art on there and uh, some of the neat mechanics that you can do with uh, particular cards and and just really loved uh, the theme of any uh, particular set at the time and I uh, actually did not uh, really uh, get serious into Magic the Gathering until the uh, Mirrodin block and uh, uh, it was then when I first really uh, noticed the, the fat packs and I really like the fat packs in Magic the Gathering. You get a whole bunch of goodies uh, with uh, 
a nice uh, set of uh, booster uh, cards and uh, the uh, spin down life counter whether it was a die or a, a card at the time and uh, just and a nice storage box and at the time uh, they had uh, novels included it looks like they don't have uh, novels uh, included uh, with the fat packs nowadays but I really enjoyed the fat packs uh, starting with uh, I think it was Mirrodin uh, let me just see uh, just going through some of my older uh, encyclopedias uh, you can see uh, they're not the same as they uh, they were before and uh, these pamphlets and and stuff so uh, pretty uh, interesting but um, I was I didn't get into seriously notice these fat packs until about uh, Mirrodin and I really enjoyed uh, uh, these sets and uh, made sure to pick up a, a fat pack every time a, a set was released whether it was a core set or uh, a, a new block start of a new block and uh, I yeah did that until I think uh, according to uh, the most recent one I had uh, looks like until about um, Shadow Moor was the most recent one I had. Yeah, right here, uh, the Shadow Moor set, and uh, then took a pretty much a big break. Uh, it was not until just recently when uh, I noticed that um, Munchkin Number Two, my son. Uh, took an interest in Magic the Gathering. He um, saw it on the um, shelves of, uh, and really uh, thought the art uh, was pretty cool. And then once we uh, busted open a couple of packs, uh, he uh, really uh, wanted to build a deck and uh, play against his dad. <laughs> and uh, it got me back into the Magic the Gathering. Um, but uh, of course, there's been a few. Uh, sets uh, that have been released since uh, Eventide, uh, which is uh, where I had to stop, or Shadowmoor, where I had stopped. So, uh, getting back into these uh, Magic the Gathering, just catching up on all of these uh, new sets uh, that I've uh, missed uh, is going to be uh, pretty fun. Now, trying to get these fat packs from the, the sets I missed is going to be kind of difficult. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of research and found out these uh, the older sets um, since uh, Shadowmoor can get quite expensive, especially uh, Zendikar. I think it's because of the lands in that set. But uh, but I decided to go ahead and get started uh, to get back into the game, at least with the Theros set. Uh, uh, as of this video, Journey into Nyx is uh, just released, uh, which is the third uh, set in this Theros block. And I decided to go ahead and get started with at least the first of this block and uh, in collecting these fat packs. So it's going to be uh, quite an interesting uh, journey to get back into the game. Now, let's go ahead and take a closer peek at the contents of uh, this particular fat pack. And uh, looking at this, it hasn't changed too much since I last collected the uh, fat packs uh, but there are some uh, new items uh, that we have in here and uh, first up uh, we have here which is basically the uh, box sleeve to the fat packs and it's kind of interesting uh, they have artwork within them on the inner portion of the sleeve so if you actually uh, take this apart it produces a nice little mini type poster uh, which is pretty cool and uh, and it is of Elspeth uh, the planeswalker that's featured on this uh, particular uh, fat pack um, but I don't want to bust mine open because I actually have uh, I still have the uh, box sleeves uh, for the other fat packs I've collected and I never uh, opened uh, split open uh, any of those so I'm gonna keep mine uh, still glued on there uh, but uh, that's uh, pretty cool and of course uh, with the, uh, I guess now standard box that comes included with fat packs, you have a uh, card box that slips open. You can put cards in there or deck boxes in there. Kind of cool. And uh, this particular box has a featured, of course, Elspeth, 
on there. The Planeswalker in this uh, particular uh, set there. And it's pretty much the same on uh, both sides here. Got the Magic the Gathering logo top. And uh, pretty interesting. You got the logo here on the side as well. And uh, of course, uh, we have here uh, a couple of flattened uh, deck boxes, uh, which is new to me. I haven't seen these before uh, that were included in the older fat packs. But uh, you got uh, two planeswalkers there, of course, Elspeth on the left, and uh, Xenagos, I believe that's his name, on the right. So uh, if you have a customized deck, uh, you can store them here. I don't know if I'll plan to fold this into a box or not, uh, because I already have uh, some deck boxes. But uh, it's kind of neat uh, to have uh, these, and I'm pretty sure they'll fit in the fat pack box. So that's kind of cool. Uh, of course, you have the spin down life uh, counter, which is basically a die 20 or d20. Yeah, with uh, the, I guess the uh, logo for this particular set, Theros. You got the symbol, I should say, of Theros there, uh, representing the 20 on here. And this is, is basically a life counter tracker. Uh, and uh, mine is in green. I don't know if they're different in every set or not. Uh, but you can see green and blue on this particular uh, die 20. Uh, so, but pretty cool. You can keep track of your health uh, using uh, this. And uh, we have here folded up pamphlet. And uh, looks like it's just uh, pretty much standard in uh, like the deck boxes. Uh, showing you uh, the features of the game, the battlefield uh, on here, and the colors that you can play. So if you're new to the game or coming back to the game, uh, you have uh, information on how to get started, how to play, and a nice glossary of terms, and which I'll have to go through because uh, uh, block to block, it seems like uh, Magic uh, or Wizards of the Coast, uh, like, they do change things up and they include or discard uh, uh, mechanics uh, on here to keep the game fresh. And I'll have to pretty much... Uh, catch up and see what's current and standard as far as mechanics go so that's kind of nice that they include this and uh, here we have a basic land uh, pack and uh, 80 cards from what's described on the box so uh, you have quite a few uh, land types hopefully there's uh, at least a one of each uh, card uh, from each of the colors because uh, uh, that'll be cool to have there and uh, you can see uh, this uh, one is particular one is red for mountain uh, nice art there and uh, pretty much uh, my favorite part of the fat pack is the uh, encyclopedia here or guidebook of the Theros set and I really liked uh, uh, looking over all of the cards that are available in the in the particular set and, uh, and It's just uh, really neat and uh, we'll go over this uh, just Show uh, what is contained uh, within the book It's uh, pretty neat and uh, this particular set or block uh, features a, a nod to Greek mythology uh, and uh, not exactly Greek mythology, uh, just in this particular plane of Theros, uh, they do have a pantheon of uh, gods. And uh, they are symbolized uh, through, or represented through uh, what are uh, mythic rares, which is new to me. I don't remember mythic rares, uh, yeah, at least in Shadow Moor. I can't remember, uh, which is the last set I have been seriously playing with. But... Uh, you got some information about this particular plane and uh, like I said, uh, looks like I'm taking a serious nod towards Greek mythology on there, so pretty cool. And uh, the gods of Theros there. 
Uh, Heliod, uh, god of the sun. I guess that would be the Zeus equivalent of this particular plane. We have Thassa, god of the sea. Erebos, uh, god of the dead. Perforos, god of the forge. Nelia, god of the hunt. And uh, we have some profiles for uh, some of the lore in this uh, game. Uh, we have uh, several planeswalkers in this set. We have Elspeth. Pretty neat. Some nice artwork there. And uh, we have another planeswalker here, Ashiok. And uh, Xenagos, which was on the deck box earlier. And then the... Uh, seems um at wizards of the coast they always include the 10 coolest uh cards in the set at least uh according to them and uh here are the first five uh, which they consider uh pretty cool and the uh, next five here and then you have a variant uh way of uh playing uh magic uh, called wizard's tower Pretty neat. And uh, some advertisements of the other uh, Magic the Gathering uh, products, including the Deck Builders Toolkit here. And uh, here's where it gets uh, really interesting. Uh, the Card Encyclopedia, which features uh, all of the cards in this uh, set. Now, this particular set uh, has about 250 cards, I believe. And uh, you can see some of the cards here. Uh, and they are numbered. So uh, from 1 to, I think it's 249. So, pretty cool. We'll go through each of these pages briefly just to show off uh, some of the cards that are included in this set. So, pretty interesting here. And I really love uh, the artwork. The artwork on Magic the Gathering for me has uh, always been excellent. And uh, I just really uh, enjoy it. Yeah, you have some uh, different styles, of course, but because um, uh, they're different artists. Uh, but it's uh, just very nice to go through these cards and uh, appreciate all of the great artwork there. And of course, uh, looking at all of the neat mechanics that certain things do and uh, you can see um, there's a bit of a change here on this particular uh, card here it has a new uh, mechanic called bestow and they actually even changed the card art uh, the frame area with a starry uh, background to represent uh, Nyx I believe it's called on this particular universe so they make subtle changes uh, to uh, the actual card uh, framing area as well so that's kind of neat last time they uh, i remember them doing a major change to that type of format was with the uh time spiral i believe where they actually ch radically changed the uh, layout of the card uh, to represent a futuristic view into the uh, a the change in the layout but uh here it's more subtle uh, with that starry background uh, whenever a particular mechanic that is uh, specific to Theros block is featured on there. And some of the artwork there is really great. Pretty cool. And there. Uh, doesn't look like there are many um, multicolor cards in this particular set um, <clears throat> I think uh, due to the uh, Ravnica or return to Ravnica block uh, the previous block uh, where uh, multiple colors are more prominent uh, it looks like they are moving away from that in this particular block or maybe we just haven't got to that section of uh, the uh, multicolors on there looks like uh, we're in the greens right now pretty cool oh, here we go here are the multicolors 
and uh, there's a mythic rare which I believe is from what I've done my research is one out of every eight rares is a mythic rare uh, uh, according to the distribution so that's pretty cool and um, trying to see if there's the god type maybe I don't know if I may have missed it a few of the god types but there's a new uh, type uh, to represent the deities in this particular plane which is uh, pretty interesting on there and there's some of the artifacts and some of the uh, special lands and basic lands in this particular set uh, pretty cool and then you have a checklist of uh, card of the cards in this set so uh, very cool I'm I really enjoy having that this uh, encyclopedia now we'll be right back and we're gonna go ahead and take a peek of at the nine booster packs that were included in this particular okay we're back and we're at the fun part of the fat pack and that's how opening the packs uh, for this fat pack we have nine boosters and we're gonna go ahead and get started uh, with the first one here and we're gonna see what we have and uh, take a peek and for our first uh, pack we have uh, 15 cards and uh, probably an, a token card or an advertisement card and we're first one we have here is chosen by Heliod pretty cool Mnemonic Wall Viper's Kiss Opaline Unicorn Ray of Disillusion Commune with the Gods Returned Phalanx Laguna Band Elder Lost in a Labyrinth Farika's Cure and for our first uncommon we have Anvil Rot Raptor second uncommon is Vanquish the Fowl and uh, Evangel of Heliod and for our rare we have a legendary creature zombie warrior Timurit the Murder King that's pretty cool and he's a uh, black red and 2-2 two -two creature legendary creature pretty interesting and we have a uh, land card there uh, no token just a, a um, advertising card there pretty cool for our first pack take a look at our second one of course I'm hoping to get some of the uh, gods I'd like to see that uh, I'm not sure what else uh, I'm looking to get uh, probably uh, the planeswalkers and uh, but I have to uh, review the the um, uh, encyclopedia further to see uh, what other cards are from the set since I'm pretty new to that Okay, our first uh, common uh, for uh, this second pack is Demolish. Ephara's Warden. Flesh Mad Steed. Nimbus Nay Nayad, I believe that's uh, how you pronounce it. Wave Crash Triton. Cavern lamp pad, and uh, if you notice the frame on this one, it has uh, the starry background of Nyx there, uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, this uh, card has the bestow mechanic there, uh, which is new to uh, this uh, particular set, which is uh, pretty cool. Another one uh, with the bestow mechanic, baleful uh, Adelon. 
traveling philosopher, two headed Cerberus, aqueous form. It's nice art. I actually like that. I hope to get a foil of that. That actually looks pretty cool. Tormented hero. And our first uh, uncommon of the second pack, Horizon Scholar, a Sphinx. Herberos's Emissary. And cool, we have a uh, Mythic Rare uh, based on the color of that rare uh, card, an uh, orangey color. Uh, this is a Hound, Underworld Cerberus, and of course that's a reference to Cerberus uh, from the Greek uh, mythology, three-headed uh, guardian of the Underworld. And uh, this card uh, uh, takes three uncolored, a black and a red, and it's a 6-6 six -six creature, so pretty cool. And I've uh, got a Forest and a token card of a Soldier. And of course you can see uh, this one is uh, themed for that Greek-like uh, mythology of Theros. You got the symbol there, so that's pretty neat. Let's put this over here and open our third uh, pack. Let's see what we have. No foils yet. Uh, foils of course are um, not in every pack. Oh, what does it uh, say? Usually from what I remember, they tell you the how often they show up in a pack. Uh, premium card odds are approximately uh, 1 in 67 cards. So uh, roughly uh, 1 in uh, 4 packs, 4.5 packs, say. Go ahead and open this one up. And uh, take a look at what we have here. We have uh, Flesh Mad Steed. Cavalry Pegasus, Nalia's Disciple, Stymied Hopes, Oops. Setessen Battle Priest, which is uh, pretty interesting. Let me just get this, move this card out of the way here. Uh, take look at that. And uh, we have Death Bellow Raider. A nice uh, special type land card. Uh, Unknown Shores. Aqueous Form. Uh, of course, we're going to get quite a few of these common cards repeated. Asphodel Wanderer. Wingsteed Rider. And uh, Horizon Scholar again uh, for an uncommon. Sea Lock Monster. And uh, that uh, uses the monstrosity uh, mechanic there, which is uh, pretty interesting. And Triton Fortune Hunter for the uncommons. And uh, another uh, mechanic heroic on there. Pretty cool. And uh, for this rare, we have Nykthos Shrine to Nyx, a legendary land card. Pretty cool. And of course, uh, a Plains card and a Satyr uh, token card. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, what is this, number four? Number five? Four? Look. Uh, we have an artifact. Pretty cool. Fleet Feather Sandals. Demolish. Afara's Warden. I actually like the art on that one. That's like, it looks pretty neat. Flesh Mad Steed again. Cavern Lamp Pad again. Staunch Hearted Warrior. Silent Artisan, Time to Feed, 
Blood Toll Harpy. That's an interesting uh, picture there. Breaching Hippocamp. For our first uh, uncommon, we have Stone Shock Giant. Glare of Heresy. And uh, Triton Tactics. And for our rare, we have Arbor Colossus. Uh, using the monstrosity uh, mechanic there. The basic land card, of course. Another soldier token. And uh, for our fifth uh, pack here, let's go ahead and take a peek. No gods yet. And uh, we have Mnemonic Wall again. Cavalry Pegasus. Loathsome uh, Catob Lepus. Nalia's Presence. That's a nice card. I like the artwork on that. That's very cool. And uh, what's the uh, info on this card? Enchant land when Nalia's Presence enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted land is every basic land type in addition to its other types. That's actually a nice card. I like that. Wavecrash Triton. Another artifact, Traveler's Amulet. Blood Toll Harpy. Breaching Hippocamp again. Aqueous Form again. Spearpoint O-Red. Or O-Read, I'm not sure how they pronounce that correctly or not. Heliod's Emissary for our first uh, uncommon of this pack. Magma Jet. Satyr Piper. And for our rare, we have Anax and Symede or Chimede. Legendary Creature. Uh, this takes one uh, uncolored, uh, a red and a white uh, for 3-2. Interesting. And uh, we have a um, swamp and an advertisement card. Or actually, this is more of a tip card there. Pretty cool. Number six. I'm hoping for at least one god in this uh, fat pack. Let's, let's hope. And uh, we have Cavalry Pegasus. Nalia's Disciple again. Stymied Hopes again. Nessian Cursor. That's a first. Cavern Lampad again. Staunch Hearted Warrior again. Aqueous Form again. Spear uh, Point uh, O Red uh, again. Volpine Goliath, that's a uh, new. And this is new as well, Yoked Ox. Uh, for only one uh, white for a zero four. <laughs> okay. For our uncommons, we have Mogus's Marauder, Horizon Chimera, and Cutthroat Maneuver. And uh, here we have Curse of the Swine for our rare. And a Plains card and another Soldier token. Moving on to number seven. Let's take a peek. Open this one up. Go through this. Cavalry Pegasus. Again. Loathsome uh, Catub. Catob Lepus, Nalia's Presence again, Fleet Feather Sandals again, Boon of Erebos, this is uh, new for one black. Target creature gets uh, plus two plus zero until end of turn, regenerate it, you lose two life. Annul, Titan Strength, I don't know if that's a reference to Atlas there or not. Yoked Ox, Voyaging Satyr, 
Sea God's Revenge. And I'm wondering if this is a reference to uh, Odysseus and uh, Odyssey. Magma Jet for our Uncommon. Fasa's Emissary for another Uncommon. And uh, Ember Swallower for a uh, Gold. A rare uh, creature elemental for five. And our first uh, foil here is a Stone Shock Giant. And uh, is a uh, uncommon. Now, I thought um, when they did foils, uh, the foil was supposed to replace one common card no matter uh, what the foil was. But it uh, looks like they went back. Um, to the foil replacing the rarity of the card because this is an uncommon and we only got two uncommons in this uh, pack uh, two regular uncommons in the pack so I'm not sure if they changed that back because I thought they were going to um, uh, replace a common card for no matter what the foil is I am gonna have to look that up again I thought I read something about that. But that's uh, our foil card, our basic land card, and another soldier token. But this one's a little bit different uh, artwork. Uh, this is a red soldier token. So, pretty cool. Take a peek at uh, this one, number eight. We have a Divine Verdict. Sip of Hemlock. That's an interesting uh, art uh, piece of art there. Shredding Winds. Death Blow or Death Bellow Raider. Lagana Band Elder. I think we got that one before. Priests of Eros. Eros. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that uh, correctly. Fade into Antiquity. Returned Centaur, Griptide, Commune with the Gods. That's not, I really like that artwork there. It's really nice. Anvil Rot Raptor for our Uncommon, Centaur uh, Battle Master, and uh, Dauntless Onslaught for our Uncommon, our last Uncommon. And for our rare, we have Hundred Handed One, a uh, giant creature uh, for uh, two uncolored, uh, two white, uh, for a three five creature with monstrosity three, and has vigilance. Pretty interesting there. And uh, we have our land card and uh, another tip card there. Well, this is really about uh, Xenagos. And for our final. In our uh, Theros fat pack here, gonna go ahead and take a peek, see what we have here. We have Dragon Mantle, that's a new one, it's an aura. Enchant creature when Dragon Mantle enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted creature has a red, uh, one red tap, uh, or just one red. This creature gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Nessian Asp, that's a new one also. Satessan Griffin, Disciple of Fenax, Agent of Horizons, Crackling Triton, Triton. that's a new one. I like the artwork on that one. Spark Jolt, Last Breath, Scourge Mark, it's interesting there, Griptide, for our Uncommons we have Mogus's Marauder, Warrior's Lesson, and uh, Cutthroat Maneuver, and our final rare is a hammer of perforos legendary enchantment uh, artifact i don't know if that's a new uh, type there uh, where it's enchantment artifact so pretty interesting there
and uh, we have our land and a harpy uh, token card so uh, no gods in this particular uh, fat pack or planeswalkers but uh, we have some interesting uh, rares uh, and a foil just uh, for quick review of the cards we, uh, we got uh, we got the stone shock giant as a foil hammer of perforos hundred handed one ember swallower curse of the swine anax and uh, Symed or Symed, I'm not sure how you pronounce that arbor colossus nykthos shrine to nyx Underworld Cerberus and Timurit the Murder King. So pretty cool. And uh, this uh, is our casual peek into our uh, Theros um, fat pack. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.